I'm not as think as I smart I am I'm not as think as I smart I am I'm not as think as I thought I might be for that clear anybody to see I'm not as think as I smart I am I'm not as think as I smart I am I'm not as think as I clever I would be I'm not half as clever as me Hi I'm your host just an ordinary guy curious about the universe Welcome to the first installment of the Brains Matter podcast this will evolve as time goes on, but the plan is for it to be a fortnightly podcast, whether it be astronomy, chemistry, biology, physics, history, anthropology, or anything else that's interesting. Even if it's left of centre, I'll endeavour to bring it to you. And first up, some news. Nokia has announced a new range of short-range, energy-efficient wireless technologies to rival Bluetooth called Wibri. Anyone who's an expert on Wibri and can tell me why it's better than Bluetooth, please drop me a line. I'm really curious. The month to October 2006 hasn't been a good one for the environment. The European Space Agency has reported that the Antarctic ozone loss has been the highest ever recorded. A loss of 40 million tonnes has beaten the previous high of 39 million tonnes back in the year 2000. The Ig Nobel Prize has been awarded yet, and yet again. The Ig Nobles are awards handed out at Harvard University by the Annals of Improbable Research magazine for weird and wacky scientific research, and the recipients this year included Randolph Blake, Dr. Lynn Halpern, and James Hillebrand for discovering why the sound of fingernails going down a blackboard annoys so much. It is, surprise, surprise, the sound's frequency levels. One of the results of their research was Howard Stapleton's teenager repellent, which produces painful noises to the ears of teens and those in their early 20s, but inaudible to adults. Another award went to research on a cure for hiccups and why feet smell like cheese. This time news on the real Nobel Prize. Roger D. Kornberg, whose father won a Nobel Prize half a century ago, has won a Nobel Prize for chemistry for his research into how cells take information from genes to produce proteins. Have you heard the one about CLAM? CLM is a three-year-old, or was a three-year-old when she died. Fossil hunters in Ethiopia found the bones of this little girl who lived 3.3 million years ago, making her the earliest human ancestor discovered to date, and probably one of the youngest. CLM means peace in an Ethiopian language, and she belongs to the species Australopithecus afarensis, making her the same species as the famous Lucy, discovered in 1974, believed to be a forebear of the current human genus Homo. Sea lamb's discovery is a boon for scientists. Her skeleton is remarkably complete and the lower half is per- perfectly adapted to walk upright. The study of her remains strengthened the evi- evidence around the link between Australopithecus afarensis and Homo sapiens. Time for today's brain teaser. Who won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2005? The answer to this shortly. In the news lately, there's been reports of a new type of extrasolar planet. Extrasolar planets are those that have been found outside our solar system. So far, there have been 202 extrasolar planets found since 1995. A normal understanding of planets orbiting stars such as our Sun are that the smaller, rockier planets cl- orbit closer to the star and the larger gas planets such as Saturn and Jupiter orbit further away, and then at extremely large distances, smaller ice bodies such as Plutons. The journal Nature reports that observations with the Hubble Space Telescope from Dr. Kaya Sahu and his colleagues from the Space Telescope Science Institution in the US have shown that they have discovered planets in a region of the Milky Way called the Galactic Bulge. They discovered around 16 planets that take between 0.4 and 3.2 days to go around their respective stars. To put that in perspective, the Earth, which is the third closest planet to our Sun, takes 365 and a quarter days to orbit our star. The planets have also been discovered to, to have a very low density, around a third of that of Saturn. Normally, planets that orbit so closely to their star will be destroyed by solar radiation. The fact that these planets are as large or larger than Jupiter and have a low density um, much lower than our gas giants and orbit around their stars so quickly add to our understanding of how planets form around stars and leave a lot of work for researchers to find answers to. So did you get today's brain teaser? 
the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2005 went to Barry Marshall and Robin Warren from the University of Western Australia for their discovery of the bacterium Helicobacter pylori and its role in gastritis and peptic ulcer disease. They discovered that stomach ulcers were caused by bacterium, not stress. In fact, Dr. Marshall swallowed the bacterium himself to prove their research. Now that's putting where your money where your mouth is. Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, on their return to Australia, very little was said in the media about their award. I guess they weren't cricketers or footballers, so they didn't figure on the radar of politicians as much. Makes you wonder about the intelligence of politicians, doesn't it? That brings to an end the first instalment of the Brains Matter podcast. In upcoming episodes, I'll occasionally bring you interviews with scientists and other brainy people, so make sure you're subscribed to the podcast via iTunes, which you can do a search in, or using your favourite podcatching software. The link is feeds.feedburner.com slash brains matter with a capital B and a capital M. If you enjoyed the show, have any questions or any ideas for future shows, let me know by emailing brainsmatterinbox, that's all one word, at gmail.com or posting a comment on the show notes at www.brainsmatter.com. Let me know what you think of the show and leave me a comment telling me where in the world you live and how you found the podcast. Music used on today's show comes courtesy of the Podsafe Music Network. And a quick fact, do you know that less than 30 seconds worth of fuel remained when Apollo 11's lunar module landed on the moon on the 20th of July 1969? Not much at all, is it? And remember, as Thomas Huxley said, science is simply common sense at its best. In the next few episodes, I'll look at how the oceans affect climate and we'll talk to an expert on gravitation. So, bye for now. I smart, I was thought, but I know I am not. Crow, I now know I'm eating like pie, an arrogant idiot high. I'm not as think as I smart, I am. I'm not as think as I smart, I am. I'm not as think as I thought I might be, for that's clear anybody to see.